What is cone failure? Cone failure is pulled out by bond failure between concrete and bolt shank. Design cone failure strength is based on an ultimate uniform tensile stress of 0.335 a square root of a prime C acting on an effective stress area which is defined by projected area of the stress cone radiating from the bearing edge of the head of the anchor towards the surface of the concrete. This effective area is limited by overlapping stress cones, which are, which are shown in this picture for two intersecting cones, and here for four intersecting cones, and the edge of the concrete. This effective area should be reduced by bearing area of the anchor head. And for simplicity, we assume that the bearing area of the anchor is taken as zero. So this means the cone starts from the um, exactly center line of the anchor, and then it extends to the surface with 45 degree uh, angle. The spacing uh, between the poles um, is taken as 100 for M12 to M24 bolts, 150 for M30, and 200 for M36 bolts. Let's talk about embedment length and anchor details. In order to calculate embedment length, we need to ensure cone capacity is equal or greater than ultimate capacity of the bolts to ensure ductility. As you might remember from the previous slide, the cone capacity was 0.335 a square root of a prime C times A, which is projected surface area of the cone, which needs to be equal to or greater than NTF, which is ultimate capacity of the bolt. Based on this area, which can be calculated for single cone, two intersecting cones, or four intersecting cones, we can calculate L1, which is for embedment length for single cone, L2, embedment length for two intersecting cones, and L4, which is embedment length for four intersecting cones. And this value has been calculated and is shown in the book of Design a Portal Frame by Wolcock et al., which is published by ASI. So you can see these values L1, L2, and L4 for different bolt diameters. Also in this table, you can see minimum edge distance which are shown by E1 and E2. E1 is minimum edge descent in unreinforced concrete with no shear on bolts. And E2 is minimum edge distance in unreinforced concrete for full development of shear strength of the bolts towards the edge. We have two types of base plate connections. The first one is pin connection and for this connection, we usually use mild steel grade 4.6 volts plus thin base plate. Minimum base plate thickness as per AISC suggestion is 25 millimeter and not less than 20 millimeter. For fixed base plate, we can use grade 8.8 .8 volts and a thick base plate. There should be usually a space between base plate and foundation to adjust the bolts and base plates. For this reason, this space should be more than 25 for grouting, 50 for mortar bedding, and 75 for concrete bedding. Let's talk about base plate stress distributions. There are many different methods and theories for design of base plates for example, assumption for the rigidity of the base plate, or using ASD or LRFD methods. Our assumption here is that the stress distribution under the base plate is linear, and we have elastic behavior for the base plate.